Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Coach's Tips. Here I am Steve and today we are going to talk about what is better for training your core. Is it dynamic or passive movements? Hey everybody, so welcome back and in this episode of Coach's Tips, as I mentioned before, we are looking at the best way to train your core. Now I've alluded to this in my last couple of videos, so I'm going to directly attack this question today. And if you have watched my other videos, you will know that I despise the word core. I think it's just one of those terms like toning and functional fitness that has really been overused and misused over the last few years in the fitness industry. But but regardless, uh, what you'll hear me call it today is your midsection or your torso. So we're going to talk a lot today about torso training and really what is the best way for you to uh, train your torso. I'm going to talk about a few different studies today. So unlike last uh, time, I'm not going to individually cite each study. I will put all the studies I talk about uh, down below and please feel free to go and check them out. And if you have any different opinion on those, then please let me know and we can definitely check because that is how we learn. So uh, what we're talking about today it is uh, from Dr. Stuart McGill in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. Now uh, the first one, I will talk about this one, is called the effect of long-term isometric training. So point number one here, what is it? So what is isometric training? So isometric training essentially is uh, resisting any flexion or extension. A plank is a perfect example of this. So when we're doing a plank, we are resisting our spine from going into lordosis or into any flexion uh, and extension uh, to keep it nice and straight. Uh, next. What this study did directly is look at dynamic versus passive. And what they found was that those uh, that did passive uh, abdominal training or torso training, which is your planks, uh, had increased torso stiffness. Now, why do we care? I guess point number three, I'm flying through these ones this time. Point number three, why do we care about torso stiffness? So well, if you're an athlete, now, if you're a power lifter, if you're a weight lifter, if you play basketball, football, or any sport that requires you moving around, you want to increase your torso stiffness for a number of reasons, but the first being is transfer of energy. So when you drive off with your feet and you're throwing a ball or shooting or doing whatever, the energy that you create starts with your feet and moves your way up. Well, if you have a stiffer torso, the energy transfers more efficiently and better and therefore you'll be stronger in your upper body as well. Now this is achieved through passive isometric uh, torso training just like a plank. So that is one example of why we need to do that. Also with our squats and deadlift is really important and our bench press to keep our uh, back uh, kind of in a neutral position and nice and strong. We don't want that to bend too much when we are lifting uh, or pulling. So increasing our torso stiffness also helps with those lifts as well. And we know the many benefits of being stronger in those movements definitely helps in the field of play Torso as well. stiffness helps us improve our lifts and helps us perform better in sports. It's one of the many variables that go into uh, performance. However, now that we know isometric training is really efficient at that, what is the best isometric training to do? Well, last time I talked about this, so click the link down below, but essentially, if you haven't noticed, a lot of my videos on YouTube were involved the TRX. And what they found was in this study is that TRX with your hands in the straps performing a plank is far superior than either your feet in or both your hands and feet in the two TRX and being fully suspended and just a general plank as well. I'll also link down below to a number of different uh, videos I've done. I did a whole series called Torso Tuesday where I looked at about 16 different ways over the course of a month uh, that you can utilize isometric training to increase your torso stiffness. And that's it today. That's uh, all we have to talk about today in terms of isometric training for your torso and why you should do it and why you do not need to put your spine into flexion or extension. So don't forget to hit that like, share, and subscribe button if you enjoyed what we talked about today, and hopefully you learned something. 
And for those of you that stuck around long enough uh, and noticed my Good Life t-shirt, yes, I am Canadian. Yes, I was a fitness manager at a Good Life uh, a few years ago now. For the last 20 months, thereabout, I have been living and teaching in a uh, lovely island in the Caribbean at Ross University School of Medicine on the island of Dominica. I've been a master teacher here at the prep school on campus, and I've also been, I'm talking in past tense, but I still am right now, uh, the sports med club faculty representative. And in fact, just yesterday, uh, we did a lovely seminar in the gym where we talked a lot about this stuff because even amongst med school students, uh, they have a lot of misconceptions about stuff that goes on in the gym and why or why not you should do certain things. So if you want to learn more about why or why not you should do certain certain things, uh, you're, it's your lucky day because uh, I am coming back home. I'm coming back to Hamilton, Ontario, Canada uh, in a couple of months and I will be teaching the CanFit Pro Personal Trainer Specialist course. I'm coming back first in December and I'll be teaching a course in Hamilton at The Good Life downtown uh, for you guys over a couple of weekends in December if you're interested. You can find out more information from the CanFit Pro website. I will link to that down below. So that's it. I'll remind you guys again. Don't forget to click that like, share, and subscribe button. And hopefully you learned something today.